today we want to continue the series on uh, My Shepherd, My Shepherd, and this is the fourth one, and we're still on the first verse of the popular uh, psalm. So in verse 3 of the, of the first verse, I shall not want, I shall not want, I shall not want. I shall not want. Don't forget, we said Psalm 23 is the commonest psalm, the most quoted psalm, and is quoted in music, in literature, in fact, it's everywhere. And people talk a lot about it because it's very relatable, because the psalms inspire, the psalms comfort. It's a way the psalms comfort us. Uh, there was one day, times I take some risk. Uh, when I think back about the risk, I just give God praise. So the one I want to share, don't do it. <laughs> I just took the risk. And the risk was based on Psalm 23. I actually went to the East to uh, a one-time member of our church. Uh, the mom died. And so I went to, uh, to the East some part of Nigeria. So on my way back, my, the car that took me there uh, had a fort, mechanical fort. And this was a car for, because I normally use such services. So we got to Ibadan around uh, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 12 midnight. And there was no way to go to Lagos. And I was to go to Port Harcourt to preach. And they've been asking me to come to Port Harcourt, Bishop Odoaya, uh, for many, many months, because I, we go to Nigeria often for programs in a great mission. So, and I've given them my word that I'll come this time. And I was to fly out of Lagos early in the morning on Sunday to Port Harcourt to preach that same day on Sunday night. And I will devalue it. I will fear no evil. So I just pick a call. I called my car air company. Send me a driver. Can you send a driver? He said, yes. I'm telling you, I drove uh, between Ibadan and Lagos, that terrible road. Uh, it's, like, it's like the guy that drove, was it Jericho and Jerusalem? <laughs> I, I was in the car <laughs> between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. I'm telling you, I'll never do it again, so don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to Lagos at around 2 a.m. or after 2 a.m., even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. What, what I'm trying to say is that this psalm is very relatable. You know, when we are down, it's a psalm we use. So today, I want to look at the last part of verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Don't forget, we said the Lord. It means there is one God. The, which is an article in English language. We said the, then Lord. We said Lord is Jehovah, Yahweh. And is, present tense, not was. So that same Lord is still and is my, not our shepherd. So you have to have a relationship, a sheep. And he now saw God as the shepherd. And he understood the relationship between sheep and shepherd. So he said, God, Jehovah, the I am and I am, must be your shepherd. And David said, once that is there, once I have God, Jehovah, the Lord, as my shepherd, some things will begin to flow. I hope you understand this. So, the core of this psalm is the part A of the first verse. Once it becomes your of sheep, shepherd relationship. And don't forget the characteristics of sheep. You know, we say sheep are dumb animals. They are dirty. We say sheep are dependable. They are dependable. On the shepherd. So if you have all these things in place, some things will begin to flow. 
into your life. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? So if this relationship is not there, you can't jump to I shall not want. You can't jump to all the blessings that follow the relationship. So for us to enjoy the blessings which we'll be talking about in the coming weeks, we need to forget the Lord is the owner. So when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So what he's trying to say is that he takes care of all of my needs. He takes care of all of my needs. He meets my deepest needs. I shall not want. So it also means because he's my shepherd, he's aware of every need in my life. He's aware of every need in my life. Then I shall not want means I will have everything I need. I will have everything I need. Or I shall not lack anything I need. And it does not mean I will have everything I desire. And, and you, need to, you need to understand the two. And that's why I will talk about needs and want. Because I shall not want talks about satisfaction. It talks about contentment. You know, we live in a world whereby we just want more. We want more. And you know the problem of human? We just want to add more and more. And do you know that the, the manufacturers or those who sell, they know the problem of human. So when they promote anything new, they will just say, you can get more. They buy more. You need more. So they know that human is never contented. It's never satisfied. We just want more. We, are, we just want to add to what we, we're always fearful. If you are like that, you are not strange. You are a human being. But Paul told us in Philippians 4.11 that he learned contentment. Let me read it out. He learned contentment, which means contentment can be learned. Philippians 4.11. Philippians 4.11. Contentment. He learned contentment. This is what Paul said in Philippians 4.11. He said, not that I speak in respect of want. Here, Paul. He said, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am to be content. You see, Paul now, talking about want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Paul is saying, I learned it. If there's anything you should learn in Canada, learn to be contented. Tell your neighbor, learn to be contented. Oh, okay, you can't say it straight to your neighbor. I can't hear you. Yeah, if there's anything we should learn. If you are not content, the world is out there to get everything. The grass is greener at the other side. Psalm 34, 9 to 10. Psalm 34, 9 to 10. He said, Oh, fear the Lord. You is saved. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. So, you know, lions are strong as they are, as powerful as they are. Their children, they do lack. They do suffer hunger. But those who fear God, they go meet all of your needs. Or if you fear God, you don't need to fear. COVID-19 pandemic or not, God will take care of you. May God take care of all of your needs. Oh, I'm sure you've been seeing the miracles happening already. I say, may God take care of all of your needs. 
Psalm 84, verse 11. It said, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord, no, the Lord, the same Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. No relationship of trust that this God that will never withhold anything good from me. That same God is leading me. May God release good things into your life. Come on, may God release good things into your life. May God release good things into your life. May your future be glorious in the name of Jesus. So I want you to, to understand this, what the psalmist is saying. Because we, we've seen the attributes of this God. The Lord, my shepherd. We've seen that he gives grace, he gives glory. He will not allow us to suffer hunger. He will always provide for our needs. So it means we must also live in such a way that we understand them. So I want us to look at the differences between want and needs. Want versus needs. You see, because when you look at your life today, I love that writer. He said, I count your blessing one by one. Sitting on this, uh, on this sermon all week. On Friday, I was driving to work. I was appreciating God for his faithfulness to me in this land. I just look back and I know that God overcome your life. So if you can sit down, if the perspective, if you can look at the shepherd, you will know that he's really done awesome things for you. May you too have glorious testimonies in Jesus' name. So there are differences between want and needs. And we should not misinterpret want as a need. Because that's a problem. And let me help you. Want. What is want? Want means wish. Longing. Desires. And they are limitless. Want. Limits. And desires can be in the immediate. Or they can even be in the future. They are limitless. Desires. I want to live in a $3 million house. <laughs> That's a, is that not a desire? I want to buy a Mercedes Benz. Want. They are limitless. Oh, I want to drink Martina today. Immediate. Can easily bring a dollar and go to oh test store on McNab. I want I need an ice cream to quench my thirst. Want, but some can be in the future. But what what are needs? Needs are necessity of life. Needs are necessary to sustain life. Example: food, water, shelter, clothing. If you don't eat well, you get malnourished. If you don't drink water, you get dehydrated. If you don't have shelter. You see, during COVID-19 pandemic, even our government provided shelter to the homeless. Clothing. You know, we need to cover up. Whether in winter or in summer. But hear this. Humans can be irrational with their want, and they can turn it into a need. It is a problem. Humans can be rational. With their want, they can turn it into a need. Let, let me show you. I hope you've been reading the book of Samuel. Don't owe God that book. David, 2 Samuel 23, 14 to 17. David was then in the stronghold. And hear this story. Very interesting narrative. And the garrison of the Philistine was then in Bethlehem. 
And David said, with longing. What is that word? Look at the longing. Oh, that someone will give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three men broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate. He took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but poured it out to them. As you do this, is this not the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he will not drink it. These things were done by the three mighty men. You see, the Philistines had waged war against uh, David and his people. And they barricaded, you know, the walls. They barricaded any, any you know, any road to the Bethlehem gate. But it's like telling you now, saying, oh, I want to drink water from maybe Syria. Well, I learned there is this query, uh, well, some, there is this thing that is so nice in southern Kaduna. And that's what I want now. Who will go there for me in this COVID? You could see the want of David, the king. No water is a need, yes. We know that. But they could have just given him a cup of water, which is around. But David's want, his longing, was for water from the well of Bethlehem. Let me drive it home. And I'm talking to somebody today. You want a Mercedes like that of the pastor. But what you need is just a car to drive you around. Is that not true? Yeah. You want a multi-million dollar house. But what you need is just a house. You can call home. I'm trying. <laughs> You want your heart rich and loaded. But what you need is a responsible, loving, and God-fearing man. You say, I will mess things up. How we, we just turn, we just become irrational with our needs or with our wants. So, my shepherd. When God is your shepherd, all provisions made. Prosperity sure. When he's your shepherd. I want, before I wrap it up today, I want to show you, just to let you know, because if you know this shepherd, you know his desire for you. Five reasons God wants you to prosper. And I don't want you to doubt God again. I don't have time. I read this out last week. Matthew 6, 25 to 32. Matthew 6. L let me read it out again. Matthew 6, 25 to 32. Matthew 6, 5 to 32. Therefore I say unto you, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father fills them. That should sink in. Are you not of more value than they, than birds? Which of you by worrying, can add one cubit back to his stature. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. 
They neither toy nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Can you imagine? Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today more clothe you, O ye of little faith. Therefore, do not worry. And I'm sure God is speaking to somebody. Say, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father, and that's the shepherd, knows that you need all these things. So you see, God knows you. He knows what you need. He knows what you need. That's why Paul said in Philippians 4.19, and after, and Paul now wrote, My God shall supply all your needs according to his glory in Christ Jesus. So there are five reasons I want to show us. God is interested in your prosperity. God. He doesn't glorify him that you are poor. God will not glorify him. Poverty will not glorify him. That's not the God we serve. He's interested in your prosperity. And I want that to sink in. God is interested in your prosperity. And the question is, what is prosperity? Prosperity is ability to have options. Ability to have options. So say what? Or living in a big house and so what? Prosperity is ability to have options. What you need, you have them. That is prosperity. And if you look at God, God loves, is interested in your prosperity. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, My thoughts concerning you, they are thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. When God thinks about you, God thinks about you, you know, you know, in a way that you'll be at peace. God wants you to be settled. Don't worry. You don't need to run the rat race. You don't need to be ahead of God's timetable. God has a timetable for you. So those people who have some things, you know, they are just ahead of you. It's because they took the flight earlier. Some took the flight years before you. You too will get there. That's the truth of life. We all arrive at the same destination. And if there is any... Okay. Let me go to Third John verse 2. Third John is just one chapter. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. See, God is interested in your prosperity. He wants you to prosper, to be in good health. He wants you to prosper spiritually. He wants you to prosper financially, even in your marriage. He wants you to prosper. Then God delights in you. He delights in you. Delights in your prosperity. He delivered me because he delighted in me. He's my shepherd. He delights in me. And God will make sure that he puts you in a comfortable place. And that's my shepherd. That's why you can never want if God is your shepherd. Then three. Your prosperity gives God pleasure. It gives God pleasure. Just like you as a father, looking at your children, doing well, I'm sure you are excited. So God is excited to see you doing well. Psalm 35 verse 27, he said, let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, 
Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. You see, God has pleasure. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be established. He wants you to do well for prosperity. The problem is that we are our want, we are turning our want into need. We have been irrational. That's why we don't know that God is at work in our lives. For if God is your shepherd, you can never want. You'll be satisfied. God paid the highest price for your prosperity. He paid the highest price. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. So that he will be poor, so that we can be rich. So he paid the highest price. And let me tell you, heaven is a place of everything is there, riches. Even the roads are paved in gold. And yet, for your sake, he became poor. That you through his poverty might become rich. You see, God, he paid the highest price. So why do you need to doubt him? No matter the level you are. Just be contented. Be like Paul. Learn contentment. You will see where God will take you to. You know, I laugh at a lot of our young adults. Uh, I laugh at them in many ways. And that's for fun. Not to make jest of them. Because some of them will say, I'm beautiful now. I'm beautiful. I look good. I have six pack. I just laugh. Because my children, when they were looking at my picture, I thought I was handsome at the age of 28. When they were looking at my picture, I said, Dad, is this you? <laughs> because I've changed. 25 years after. So I always tell them, take your picture now, do all the posing. In 10 years' time, you won't want this picture. And God is just laughing at you. Because God knows what he has planned for you. In 10 years time. One of my closest friends, very close friend, because he's very close, was telling me that, ah, Pastor, I was at your 40th birthday. I was also at your 50th birthday. Ah, I saw a big, I said, this man has really jumped. And that is God. He has a lot planned for you. He delights in your prosperity. So don't outrun him. Just be contented. Just trust him. That's the fifth one. He promised it. And you know, God, whatever he says, he will do. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? So God promised it. That's the fifth one. He promised it. There are many scriptures in the Bible where God promised our prosperity. But let me give you just one. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Exodus 23, 25 to 26 Exodus, Isaiah 1, 19, a lot of places. You will see the promises of prosperity. God promised it. And he will fulfill it. As I conclude today, I want to show you prerequisite for prosperity. You need faith in God. You need to first believe that God owns everything, is the almighty, is the I am. He exists on his own. He's in his own league. He's the only wise God. He's incomparable. He said the power to create wealth is in God. He owns the, he, he owns the mount, uh, a thousand cattle. Uh, Psalm 50. He said he owns all the cattle upon a thousand hills. That is God. He created the universe. But you need to believe. You need to have faith in him. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. They that come to God must first believe he exists. He can do it. You need to have him as your shepherd. 
And he said, he's the one that can reward those that diligently seek him. Then you need to obey him. If you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You will eat the fruit of the land. Those are prerequisites. You need to have faith. You need to obey. You need to live in holiness. Proverbs 28, verse 13. It's interesting. He that covers his sin shall not prosper. You see, God hates sin. He that covers his sin shall not prosper. Titan, offering, seed. Then your words. Words of God and pray about them. There are many in the Bible. Appropriate them into your life. Generational blessings. I love Deuteronomy 15, 1. It's at the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. You can make release. You can believe God for things. Friends, I'm telling you, <laughs> there's a level you can get in God. God will keep surprising you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, if you can follow the shepherd, you will never want. You will meet all of your needs. Amen. The challenge for the week is check your wants and check your needs to see you have not turned your want into a need. Check it. Are your wants rational or irrational? Check your wants. That list. You are making for that man. You want to marry, check them. Check them. Check them. That list you are making about setting it down in Canada. Check them. The Lord is my shepherd.